It's Josh here and I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of testing on the 1100 engine in the miniature jet boat. Gonna be testing the stator and the CDI and some other stuff in the electrical box. But if you just need the information, here is the information for testing the stator. This comes from SBT. This is right here is the section I'm using on this. This is for the 1100 that I am using. And here's all the readouts that I gathered uh, during this video today off of a known good running 1100. Although I'm not certain that the charging system is working, so my readings off the charge coil may not be for a good unit, but otherwise, all the rest of this stuff is good and a bad charge coil will not keep your unit from running. Just putting up that information for you guys right away, so if that's all you need, you can get out there and start testing your stuff. You can just take a screenshot off here and get the info that you need. That being said, let's get started with the video. The last time you saw this mini jet boat, it had been running worse and worse. And actually, it finally stopped running, which is actually kind of good because now I can try to figure out why. The reason that it doesn't run right now is because it has no spark. So we've been fighting against this weak intermittent spark, and now it's finally gone to a no spark situation. I'm pretty sure the reason we were having problems with it running rich is because of whatever is causing this no spark was probably making it have an intermittent weak spark situation, which was adding to the problems of it running super rich. First thing I'm going to check is the stator, because we've always had troubles with the stators on these 1100s. I'm going to go ahead and put up the specs for a stator so that if you need the specs so you can test yours, you'll have it here. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the screen. But I did all the ohms testing on my stator and it tested out good but i don't trust that maybe there's something else going on like a you know the pickup is covered in like metallic parts or something like that so i have a brand new stator that i put on here and it didn't make any difference whatsoever so i don't think that the stator was what is wrong with it tried to find some testing specifications for the CDI units and I couldn't find anything for that. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and try plugging a couple different CDIs into this thing because we have three CDIs for the 1100 Kawasaki. Now I tried three different units and all have the same result. No spark, no start. So I'm fairly confident that that is not what's wrong with this thing. But I'm actually going to go ahead and do some testing from a known good unit so that I can take those readings onto this and figure out exactly what's wrong with the boat. I'm gonna be taking a whole bunch of readings off of the legend itself, the Sea Rat. So I'm gonna do a whole bunch of readings out of the e box on this thing, because it also has an 1100 Kawasaki that actually runs unlike the one in the miniature jet boat. I just wanted to jump in here and clarify something real quick. You're gonna be seeing the Sea Rat in this video and you're gonna see it running and me taking tests off of it. This was filmed before that day when the sea rat sank so this is actually the first time we have the sea rat fired up this year there you go it's confirmed it still runs that was its first startup of this year and we are wanting to get some videos done on this thing, so that will be coming soon as well. <clears throat> but basically, I'm going to tear into this e-box. I'm going to test the stator as well. Uh, I'm going to get voltage readings and all kinds of stuff, so that we'll actually have some reference points when, in the future, we have troubles with these 1100 Kawasaki's. Here is the e-box on this thing. It is custom e-box because it's fitted to a stand up here so it's obviously going to look different than any other e-box or stock OEM e-box first we're going to test the stator and it's these wires so I gotta get this stuff all taken out here all right first we're going to start out with the ohms test and let's see we're going to start with calling this the exciter coil and it's purple to red which this does not have purple. I can reference the other one. Okay, instead of purple, this one is actually pink with a black stripe. But normally it would be purple. So there it is. Purple to red, 469 ohms. Spec is 348 to 532, so we're good there. A little to black, 
I guess we're going to be good everywhere, really, because this is a known good running unit. Okay, yellow to black. Now, the black is actually on this other plug-in. I'm hoping I can get it out. Okay, I can just go there. 31.2. Spec is 26 or 21.6 to 32. Okay, that's good. All right, so now we're going to do the pickup coil, and that one is green to blue. 472 ohms. Spec is, looks like about 390 to 690. So we're right in there, obviously. And one last thing we're going to test is the charging coil. And to my mind, this wouldn't affect it starting. It would just affect it charging, but I could be wrong about that. And that's brown to brown in this other plug. And it is 0.8. And it should be 0.7 to 1.1. So we're right in spec, obviously. Now those ohms tests are kind of like, well, how much does that really help us? So what we're going to do is get some voltage readings going. I'm hooked up the charge coil, so let's do that first. So I'm hooked up brown to brown right now. I'm not sure how that's going to read out, but let's see. Six volts AC. Let's go brown to black. 3.6 volts AC. The other brown to black. 2.3 volts AC. And let's see what it does when it actually runs. So I'm going to plug this back in so it can actually start. All right, this is brown to black, volts AC. One point two. Let's go brown to brown. Two point four. point three on black to the other brown all right now we're gonna do the purple to red on mine here it is pink with a stripe instead of purple to pink instead of the red you may have a little bit different color combinations but and this is gonna be a cranking over test so we won't be running Seventy-seven volts AC while cranking, and I believe that may be what turns the CI unit on, but I'm certainly not positive about that. <clears throat> and then the blue and green, just the pickup coil. Let's check the voltage on that, and that should—I believe it just pulses. But let's see what it does. Point three eight volts AC while cranking. So there you go. I mean, I guess that's what it does when they work. The yellow. Let's see. As I recall, they test that to black. Okay. And this also, this yellow to black could be what turns the uh, CDI unit on as well. I'm like I said, I'm not one hundred percent certain of that. 5.8 volts AC. This is brown to brown. Uh, checking AC voltage while cranking. But I can't crank over while I have it disconnected. So I'll have to do this while it is connected. Checking the AC voltage brown to brown with the plug-in connected because it will not turn over disconnected. The engine won't turn over. That, that's something critical for the engine turning over. And the ohms are the same when it's connected. Your volts AC. 
5.9 volts was the highest I saw there. Now only thing I'm checking is the voltage regulator. And this is just to check that it charges the battery while it's running. So basically I'm looking for a higher voltage on the battery while it's running than before it's running. Right now the battery's at exactly 12 volts. Okay, well, apparently this battery does not charge. <laughs> okay. While running. So now I'm wondering if the charge coil is bad, which is our brown to brown, or if it is something wrong with the voltage regulator itself. All right, so now I'm gonna do the ohms on the CDI side. I don't know if there is a spec for this, but I have not been able to find one. Okay, so yellow to black, 1.8. 89M. Now let's do the green to blue. Nine point eight K. Uh, purple to red. Four point five M. Now let's take one of these coils, just the first one to ground. Now coming out of the CDI, the black wire is straight to ground. Now I'm gonna test the coil output from the CDI box and the output voltages should be the same on all three. I'll do it. And I'm testing from ground and they are grounded on the plug as well. So you could test it there, put the ground on there if you wanted, but I'm doing from the green wire to ground, like a good battery ground. And we'll start in volts AC, because I don't know if he's firing AC or DC, to be completely, perfectly honest with you guys. 0.2 AC, I'm gonna write that down. Then we'll go over DC here. Point 0.9 DC. Okay, and I'm getting the same readings across all three coils. These are the outputs from the CDI box. So that's what it takes to fire a coil. Now that I have the readings from a known good working 1100 e-box i can go through take some readings off of this one and figure out exactly what the issue is instead of just throwing parts at it and hoping that it'll work i went ahead and tested everything on the 1100 mini jet boat and i've been writing all my readings down so i can keep track of stuff and realistically the only reading that was slightly unusual was on the green to blue wire for the stator test and on on the CRAT, I'm at 476 ohms and 0 0.370 volts AC. On the miniature jet boat, I'm at 530 ohms and 0 0.700 volts AC. So that's the only thing that's kind of weird. So it's definitely giving an indication that there's something going on in the front cover. But I have one last test to do before I go diving into the front cover on this 1100 engine. So now I've switched the CRAT E-Box into this boat. I also hooked the CRAT E-Box up to the CRAT start-stop switch to eliminate that. And still, we have no spark. So, for me, there is something wrong. Must be something wrong inside the front cover or something else that I have overlooked. All right, now I have put the CRAT's E-Box back inside the CRAT. I just need to fire it up, make sure it still works, and just confirm that there's not something going on or something in the E-Box is getting blown by these electronics somehow over here on the miniature jet boat. So if this E-Box fires up and works here, then I can 
confirm that whatever's wrong on the jet boat is in the front engine cover, stator section, flywheel, something in there. <laughs> And since it still runs, since it still runs, that e-box is good. I would bet that there's nothing wrong inside the e-box for the miniature jet boat. And whatever our problem is, is inside that cover. Whether it's the flywheel, the spacing for the ignition pickup, this thing, something like that, something in there, something is wrong. That's the only thing left, people. The only thing left. Now it's time for me to grab another flywheel and put it on this engine because that's one of the only things that hasn't been changed. I ended up ordering a special tool to do this so that I could have the flywheel puller and not have to do it like I did last time. This is the old one here and the inside here is very scratched up and scarred from when the crankshaft seal exploded. So I'm just showing a comparison. This is one off of a different engine. And you can, I don't know how well you can see, but just got a, little, a couple of lines, not like the crazy scarring and wear marks that this one has. I went ahead and changed out that flywheel on the 1100 in the boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and test that now and see what happens. Still no spark, no start, but I'm thinking that it does have the stator on there that I put on there. It was a brand new unit, but it was one of those cheap ones from eBay, one of those Chinesium units. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the original Kawasaki one that was on here, because like I said before, I don't think there's anything wrong with the stator. So I'm going to put that back on here and I'm going to try it again. It does run. We do got the boat up and running again, so that means we're gonna be able to take it out on the water for a test. Finally, this thing has realistically been sitting for quite some time, probably over a two month period here, and we're gonna get it back out on the water and get that shred session that it absolutely deserves. But it goes to show that I was running into multiple problems on this boat. What happened was the original flywheel, something got messed up on it and it stopped, you know, stopped sparking. So, I changed out to that Chinesium cheap, cheap, cheap stator unit because I thought that might have been the problem. And then from there on out, I had a bad flywheel and a bad stator. So once I switched the flywheel and back to the original Kawasaki stator, I was able to get this thing fired up. What a pain in the backside, eh? Yeah, it sounds like we're Canadian, eh? If you need parts, make sure to check out VintageJetSki.com and for 5% off your order, use promo code JetSkiBrothers at VintageJetSki.com.